All right, we're back with another ReZero conspiracy theory. This guy nearly on red, the APA theory, the forbidden theory. I thought it was Cap until he gave us multiple examples. And in season two, episode one, where Subaru is in the room with Rem and there's an APA basket with a paring knife. Dude, that was another example of when the forbidden APA theory actually came to fruition again. This one is called Written in the Stars. Now, we know there's a lot of themes with constellations, right? A lot of these characters' names are based on the stars and constellations, so let's see what he has to say about ReZero written in the stars. Early in the story of RE0, our main character- Sorry, not ReZero, RE0. This guy has the past to call it. I don't care. After the Forbidden Theory, Apa Theory, he can call it whatever he wants. Subaru will discover that the fantasy world he has been summoned into will yeah. diverge in some key ways from his isekai genre expectations. It is not simply a feudal version of Earth with magic. Last time it was T-Rex can't do push-ups because it has short arms and his head wasn't to the ground. So <laughs> this time it's can't do pull-ups. <laughs> T-Rex t-shirt. <laughs> you know what? Okay, no disrespect to Mr. Annie News right now, okay? And the reason I'm bringing his name up is because, you know, in the intros, after he gets us with the hook about what the purpose of the video is, and before we get started, he does a little ad on his merch, but a lot of people already check out by that point because they just want to see the cut content. Advertisement through product, like, um, product placement like this, where you just have the t-shirt on. I don't even know if he's selling these t-shirts, but like this makes me want to buy the t-shirt. He doesn't even have to tell me. Simply because it's humorous and it's on screen the entire time, that is better product placement and advertisement than having like a actual segment for ads. Chicken demi-humans tossed in for good measure. In fact, other than speaking patterns and some manners of attire, there is little similarity between the world from which he came and the one he now inhabits. Okay. However, there is a pattern which seems to deliberately invoke references from our world. Stars, and that constellations. Is an association between RE0 characters and celestial entities. Yes. Some of these are more obvious than others, but one in particular I haven't seen mentioned before it came up in our rewatch discussions back in the spring. Um, and we will save that one for last. This video is a result of those discussions, and so I'm there may be it. spoilers from the director's cut, the I'm two ready. OVAs, and the shorts. However, there won't be any information from the source or season two promotional material. Let's go. So I'll ask I'm that ready. the comments will respect those restrictions as well. Starting off then, Subaru himself is named for an asterism, a cluster of stars that we know Pleiades. as the Pleiades. That's not notable by- Hold on, hold on, hold on, what does it say? The Pleiades, also known as, sorry, you guys can see this shit. Also known as the Seven Sisters and Messier 45. Seven Sisters? Seven Deadly Sins? Hmm. Are an open star cluster containing middle aged hot B type stars in the northwest of the constellation Taurus. It is among the star clusters nearest. This is more astrology shit. Sorry, not astrology. Constellation star shit. That we know as the Pleiades. That's not notable by itself, mm -hmm. as not only did Subaru come from our world anyway. That name is not uncommon for a Japanese light novel or anime character. However, we'll meet- I think his last name, Natsuki, though, is a self-insert by the author. Because his name is Nagatsuki Tape, right? Now, it's just Natsuki is just Nagatsuki without the G-A in the middle, you know, being removed. But uh, maybe coincidence? Maybe there is some, <laughs> I don't know, self-insert there? Meet other characters with somewhat more unusual celestial names. Most memorable is Betelgeuse, our yeah. Sin Archbishop of Sloth, who is the major Lucy. antagonist for the second half of season one. Technically, his name is P, right? It's P-E. It's not Betelgeuse, it's Petergeuse, but because the Japanese pronunciations, it's more of a B sound, everyone's more familiar with the B, but apparently it's P. Archbishop of Sloth, who is the major antagonist for the second half of season one. Betelgeuse is a well-known star in our world, one of the brightest in the night sky, and one of the largest that can be seen with the naked eye. One of the largest. part of the Orion. Hold the fuck up, bro. This is... Sorry, you guys can't really see here. B. B. Bro. B, not P. Now, 
I'm sure the source material is still P, but if the actual star is a B, then hmm. Constellation, and its name is Arabic in origin. Arabic. The star is also famous in part for expectations that it will go supernova sometime in the next 100,000 years. <laughs> yeah, he did go supernova with Rental Goa. In the next 100,000 years, which in celestial terms is practically moments away. His name. <laughs> Moments away, yeah, it did happen. I mean, it, <laughs> he got put into flames, it's true. Name is thus a pretty obvious reference, and he's a pretty unforgettable character. Yes. It's far easier to miss another character with an unusual star name. Who? Priscilla's helmeted knight Al. goes by Al, but in a heated moment, Priscilla will refer to him full by name. his full name. Alba Aldebaran. Aldebaran, okay, and he hates that name. There's some lore. There's a lot of cut content apparently in this episode. Maybe we should go back to the witch cult stuff or if there's like a separate Al video, but apparently this episode with Al's origins, he is he is disfigured. I thought that like his face is hiding some sort of like he's like a demi human. I thought he was some sort of dragon human hybrid because of the themes of the Dragon Kingdom, dra land dragons in this episode. And if you look at his neck, it looks kind of scaly. There's like rings around it. So I'm like, is he hiding like a dragon like head? But Priscilla said that his face got super disfigured in the past, and she made a joke of, shall I fuck it up even more? And she hates, and he hates using, you know, that name. So that's like a past name. I don't know. It's like something traumatic must have happened before when he was going by that name, and he decided to cut him away from that past and lore. Name, Aldebaran, a name he prefers she not use. This is another star name that is yeah. Arabic in origin, meaning the follower. The, the follower. Thing that it seems Makes sense, he follows Priscilla. Seems to be following, hence the name, is the Pleiades. That is, Aldebaran is a follower of Subaru. What? Okay. Lore wise, this star, Aldebaran, follows Pleiades with the Subaru, but even in the story, Aldus shows Subaru a lot of favors. From the beginning, he treats him like a brother, right? He specifically says brother. It's like a casual male friendship, right? But he's a homie. Absolutely, throughout and through. So, hmm, okay. There's some links there, huh? They are even both in the same constellation, Taurus. Let's look at how close together these three references are in the night sky. Yeah. Betelgeuse, Aldebaran, and the Pleiades, that is Subaru, all here. are all bright objects and are very nearly all in Pretty a line. Pretty close. In many popular representations, the two constellations they belong to Orion the Hunter and Taurus the Bull yeah. are presented as though they are facing off against one another, as Subaru and Betelgeuse. Yeah, true, right? Pleiades and Betelgeuse are facing against each other. They're in, you know, we are, you know, he is the main antagonist of the story in Arc 3. Betelgeuse certainly did in Season 1. If we look around this part of the astral neighborhood a bit, we might find even more such parallels. Right next to Orion is the constellation Gemini, otherwise okay. known as the Twins. We twins. have a rather Rem and Ram? prominent set of twins in RE0, of course. Did we see Rigel there? Hold up, hold up. Pleiades, where is Riger? Right next to Orion is the constant. I don't see Riger here. Rigel. Where's Pleiades? Taurus, right? Taurus, Pleiades, Vesta. Back a bit. Let's go back a little bit more. Was it there? Vesta, Taurus, Rigel. Right over here. <laughs> It's kind of fucked up that Rigel is uh, closer to Betelgeuse than you would think that if it's Subaru's son that it would be like you know and Betelgeuse like like in the Taurus section but it's in the <laughs> Betelgeuse section so what the fuck does that mean? Hmm. Orion is the constellation Gemini, otherwise known Sloth. If true, true, right? Besides the family connection, that timeline, right? That spinoff is the sloth if and Betelgeuse is there therefore Rigel being there does make sense now we're Spica Sticka or Spica it's like the daughter's name right Rigel was the son Spica or Sticka was the daughter might be around here somewhere and I otherwise known as the twins we have a rather prominent set of twins in RE0 of course our Ram -Ram. Oni maids Ram and Rim What's more, they are special among the Oni due to being twins, as mm -hmm. it results in them having been born with only one horn. Right now in the story, I'm basically assuming that Ram has potential for two horns, and maybe in the past, now that Ram is gone in the story, maybe only one horn was cut off, just like in the lore, but the other horn exists because Ram, Ram doesn't exist. Ram doesn't exist, so like, I'm expecting horned Ram to have some sort of significance if the... 
gluttony and white whale fuck up elimination shit, erasing name and memory is consistent. Well, right next door on the other side of Orion is Monokeros, the unicorn. Monokeros. A being notable for having a single prominent horn. Okay. This constellation is actually flanked on both sides by the two dog constellations, Canis Major and Canis Minor. I see it. Hmm. A one-horned entity surrounded by dogs. Where Which fiends? Where do I feel like I've seen that before? Which fiends? And in case you're wondering, those four constellations all have different names in Japanese, but those names mean the same thing. Twins, unicorn, big dog, and small dog. I think it makes sense. Back nearer to Subaru, one constellation that borders Taurus is Cetus. Cetus. Otherwise known as the whale. Oh, I white whale. Do believe we've seen a whale in our series. Yeah. In the other direction, we have our right. Do we, do we have black serpent? Um, cause like, what, what is the uh, black serpent was more frozen bonds. Maybe it has more closer association with Amelia and her constellation if it exists. Yeah. Which means charioteer for us in the West. However, the Japanese name for this constellation means a coachman or a driver of a coach. Wilhelm. Wilhelm is the driver of the carriage that Felix was in in the beginning of our three. And it's directly associated with the white whale. Perhaps like our- God damn it! That is gonna be Wilhelm. That is gonna be- Cause Wilhelm is the driver! Come on, you say white whale, then you lead into driver of a coach. I'm thinking Wilhelm. There's a direct correlation. Yeah, I know Otto also driving. But like, he- Wilhelm also drove the carriage, bro! Our unlucky friend, Otto. If you keep going that direction, above both our- No, 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 no. I cooked. I was following the logic directed with the white whale. But Otto did, you know, <laughs> he, he, he was very in the white whale arc too. Now, I think Wilhelm has a stronger association with the white whale. I still want to know what Otto was hearing from the white whale though. Because now, soul of the language, blessing, divine protection, right? He can hear animals fucking talk, witch fiends talk. Like, what, what was the whale saying, I wonder, on that carriage when he pushed them off? Raiga and Gemini, you will find the constellation of the Lynx. Okay. The big Cat. Puck! Big Cat. Frozen Bond. Frozen Bond. Daddy Puck. You know, a big cat. Of course, Puck's name itself exists in the sky, as the moons of Uranus are mostly named after Shakespearean characters. Now, this video and the others released this week are in anticipation of Season 2. Yeah. A way to build excitement for our live and immediate coverage Guys, can you can can you believe it? We just finished Free Zero season one, and I can't believe season two is airing very soon. Oh my god, I can't wait for season three in a couple of years. But right now, season two, man, all month. Oh, I can't wait. Bridge of the new episodes. Considering the pattern so far, should we look to the sky for some events that might sure. occur in the upcoming months? Like, imagine he fucking predicts like gluttony and greed right now. I don't know, like, the events of episode 1 season 2, just call it out right now, bro. Is the story written in the stars? There is a lot of mass speculating potential there, but there is only one that I want to take note of. Okay. Something I discovered completely by accident earlier this year. Oh boy. In April, the constellation Pleiades, Subaru, yeah. was transited by one of the planets. Now that means that the planet transited. crosses the same place in the sky, between us and the stars behind. Transited, okay, they, they, you know, stars fucking move around, planets revolve around shit, so it's, it's like aligned with what though, with what? The planet in question is Venus. Venus. Named for the goddess of love, Booba. called Aphrodite in okay. the Greek. Now, love is a so- <laughs> I hope I don't get limited ads for that. <laughs> but that's like a, no, that's not the same. I think you two would understand. They would, it's like fucking Renaissance like, Art, like, come on, you can't, you can't. Subject with a lot of focus in RE0. Zero, Venus. Several examples, both of different types of love and of healthy and unhealthy affection between. For sure, Subaru's one-sided love for Amelia. Satala's one-sided love for Subaru. Venus, what does Venus represent? Characters, oftentimes directing their actions. If you're looking for a goddess of love character that would pass through Subaru, yeah. there are a couple of reasonable suggestions. Who? One is Amelia, Amelia of since course. she is the object of his affection and the thing that drives him. Having his love go through healthier and unhealthier stages is a large part of the story, and his own satisfaction waxes or wanes depending on his proximity to her. 
But another possible candidate Satella? is Satella. Yeah! We don't yet know the association between Satella and, and Amelia. And Satella has no constellations reference? Some link exists, but it's still mysterious. Yeah, we don't really know that, right? Satella and Amelia, what do we know? We know that both are half-elves. Both have silver hair, bluish-purple eyes, right? Other than that, that's pretty much it. And everyone calls Amelia the half-devil because she looks like Satella. But beyond that, the fact that Satala most likely gave Subaru the regression powers in the first episode, where Amelia and you know, Subaru both died in the loot cellar, and Satala wanting Subaru. Well, that's... I don't know. It, it seems like Amelia is going to be the compatible candidate, right? To become the vessel for Satala to possess the body. But beyond that, is there like lore, family, relationships, friends, past? I don't fucking know. However, Satala is also associated with love in a few ways. How? One is that Betty describes her as being starved for love. That's right, she's envious, right? She's an envious witch. What is she envious of? Subaru's love for Amelia. For whatever reason, the envious witch loves this fucking loser from Japan. Did nothing with this life. 17-year-old fucking neat. But she loves him. Why? That sounds insane to me. I have no clue. Well, I think that um, some of the suggestions are because the regression powers are, you know, deeply rooted with time travel. Maybe there is some sort of link where uh, Satala knows of a Subaru in a different timeline where he's so fucking cool and amazing. And basically, based off of that, she sees the idealized version of Subaru there and then obsesses over him in these timelines until he gets to that point. Maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of different interpretations of it, but one of the most important parts was when Amelia died because Subaru wanted to just go all out and say, I can return by death because he was so frustrated that run, right? At that point, I thought that maybe uh, Satala was, it's like a warning call of, you know, before you try to do the shit at the Capitol and before Amelia left you, I grabbed your heart just as like a warning call. And in fact, even before that too, right, in Arc 2, he tried in the bed in Roswell's mansion. It was another warning call. So third time is a strike. But beyond the strike, it's just like, is this something of sharing something so close between you and me, right? This is a secret. No one else should know. I think that Puck probably knows. I think that Betty probably knows. But it's like that sharing of the secret that was breached. So she's envious of that. There's a lot of different interpretations. Something that has always struck me as likely to be important to the story, perhaps key to her motivations. Another is Beto Juice and yeah. the language he uses to describe love, devotion love, love. to the witch. He'll welcome Subaru as a believer in love, mm -hmm. will claim that his gospel tells of Satila's love, and will attribute a litany of types of love to her while possessing Subaru. Absolutely. And the love in these contexts, and I've carefully analyzed every one of Betragus's dialogues. If anything, I think one of the Archbishop's talk, I'm so engaged because when Betragus is talking, it sounds like pure madness. And because of the theatrics and the way that he talks with all the body movements, you think of it as a joke, as a clown character. But if you really read what he's saying, it tells a lot of maybe secrets and more of the themes associated with the gospel, right? We know now that the gospel is some sort of guide, some sort of manual, some sort of script that he refers to check if, you know, this person, Natsuki Subaru, was supposed to show up, you know, saying that he's pride. And he said, well, I have no account of you in the gospel, right? And then the way that he, like, talks about diligence and sloth, which is the virtue and the deadly sin that he represents, and the love being sometimes of, you know, we need to show the witch her love, meaning we need to repent for our sins to be, or being slothful and be diligent and be prepared for the day of the ordeal. The love does change, you know, from context here and there, but at the end of the day, love is like a generic umbrella term to show the faith in Satala, right? Whatever they'll do to accomplish the day of the ordeal. But the saddest thing is, Satala doesn't even see better use like that. She straight up s slaps him. <laughs> she was like, you're not the one. You're not him. Possessing Subaru. Satala is also quite strongly associated with Subaru, in close enough proximity to get her witch's stank all over him, witch's and whisper in his- <laughs> Witch's stank, baby. That shit dank. I'm glad. This is the first time I've someone referred to the witch's miasma with the witch's stank. Sometimes I call that shit dank, but this guy, I like him a lot. Because, like, right now, when he's, like, obviously he's reading a script, right? It, this is, like, rehearsed and prepared. But, like, it's fun to see a little bit of his actual personality leak out by saying stank, the different, you know, words that he uses. 
Tila is also quite strongly associated with yeah. Subaru, in close enough proximity to get her witch's stank all Hell over yeah, him, brother. and whisper in his ear or crush his heart. Mm -hmm. In another video, I talked about the prominence of Appas and yeah. the symbolic significance of Appas. If you have not seen the Forbidden Appa theory, man, you need to check it out. It is not just a conspiracy theory. I'm starting to believe that it's true, especially because episode one, season two again. Or was it number episode two or one? I don't know. I think it was number one. But it was like, oh my god, the Appas are in frame. And exactly what he said would happen did happen. Apples in our world. Well, apples were strongly associated with Venus. Yes, is we it? We accept them as a symbol of temptation. And accept that Venus is representative of Satella or Amelia hmm. as well. Then this transit starts to look even more like part of a pattern. Okay. And there's more. Venus makes its transit through Subaru in early April, as you can see here while I advance the days. Made contact with Subaru? It might be worth mentioning that Subaru's birthday is supposed to be April 1st, but there is- Really? <laughs> His birthday is April Fools? Some other significance to April, specifically April of 2020. Oh, I thought he was gonna say April 20th. 420 brothers, stank a dank, the witch is ganja. See, Venus does not make this transit every year. Yeah. If I back the years up, you can see that the Only part sometimes. of the sky it crosses will vary depending on the position of its and Earth's orbits. Hmm. The significance of April... What does that mean? Sometimes it'll pass through with it, but sometimes it doesn't. Satella cheating on us? 2020 is as the month the director's cut rebroadcast of season one actually ended, Whoa, 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 the date, the date here, hold up. April 2020 is as the month the director's cut rebroadcast of season one actually ended. So right now, what do we have? April 1st, Subaru's birthday. We just talked about how the transition, the transiting of Venus through Subaru, right? And sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. April 2022nd is the director's cut ending. What does this mean? And had the pandemic not delayed things, season two would have begun immediately afterwards. Okay. Coincidence? Therefore? Possibly. But like I said, the transit doesn't happen every year. Okay. To find the previous transit, we must back all the way up to 2012, as it happens in eight-year cycles. Is there any significance cycles. to April of 2012? Only in the sense that the source material was first released on that month in that mm. year. The story quite literally began around the conjunction of Venus and Subaru in the sky, I guess that does make sense. The timelines do match up. Just as the actual narrative begins with Subaru coming into contact with Amelia and Satella. Okay. Behind the I mean, yeah, it transited Subaru, right? Venus. Venus is supposed to represent Satella and Amelia 2012. That's when this shit happened. And not only that, April 1st, birthday, April 22nd, you know, director's cut happening. There are definitely patterns here. Maybe we're reaching too much and this is all just a coincidence, but that's a lot of coincidences. The Subaru constellation may have relevance here as well. In the West, the Pleiades is the name given to seven sisters of Greek mythology. Seven sisters, seven deadly sins. And in some versions, one of them becomes mortal and fades away, leaving the six most prominent stars in the cluster. Okay. We, of course, have a situation. Yeah, which of Envy consumed the rest of the witches, right? All six witches were consumed by Satala, and coincidentally, there's only six Archbishops of Sin 2, which I'm assuming that Envy position is gone simply because the Witch of Envy consumed the six witches, and maybe that just means that the Archbishops only represents those six that Satala consumed. ...in our series with seven deadly sins, but also related groups of six. The six witches that Satella devoured, or the six sin archbishops that Subaru yes. could perhaps become part of. Now, we still don't know if the Archbishop of Envy is the position that doesn't exist, right? These are just guesses based on patterns of behavior that we're seeing in the show. Subaru in Japanese gets its name from meaning to unite or bunch together as... Subaru means unite or bunch together? Interesting. Well, he does quite often unite forces and leads them into battle, right? I think the White Whale subjugation is exactly one example of that. Even in Arc 2, even in Arc 1, from the beginning, right? It's all about him wanting to do everything himself because he wants the recognition because he's a fucking loser and the pride and the ego consumes him. But once he gets over that, once he humbles himself, 
and he realizes to ask for help. Reinhardt, Felt, Amelia, Romji, everybody was there. Arc 2, we asked for Biko, right? Then Rem, Ram, Roswell even fucking helped at the end of Arc 2. That's the only time he fucking helped. Arc 3, Whale Subjugation, right? Anastasia's army, Krushi's army, they all helped out. So he is uniting. And it does look like his character is going to go in that direction because I haven't really seen him be... Like, I want him to be capable enough to fight alone, but does that make sense? Would it make sense for Subaru to actually be, have powers to fight independently? Maybe that's a bit too much, but having a guy that seems to have limited direct combat abilities, but have all these support utilities and strategies to unite the forces and lead them into war, that is pretty cool, and that's exactly what he did in the White Whale Subjugation arc. As the star cluster does, and also is represented as six main stars, as in the car <laughs> manufacturer. That's crazy. So, so, I always knew that this is the car manufacturer, and fun fact, one of my, it's not really a childhood friend, but one of the girls that lived in my neighborhood in my elementary school, her dad worked for a Subaru, and I thought that, oh, that's kind of cool. There was, they also, they always had like a Subaru like sports car in their fucking drive through I was like, huh. That's kind of cool, but anyways. Super, beyond the car memes, there's actually six stars in the logo. Holy shit. Holy shit. Six archbishops, six witches consumed by Satala. Hmm. For a logo of the same name. So, does that mean Subaru will unite the six witches to be on his side? What does this imply? Because... This is, yes, you have the name Super. We have Pleiades, but six stars within unite. Six witches. <sighs> well, next episode, we're going to actually talk to the Witch of Greed, Echidna. And she seems pretty starved for conversations because it's been a long time, I guess, and she's super bored. Huh. Is she going to use it? Because, like, we're not uniting the Archbishops. That's for fucking sure. Those Archbishops are maniacs, but the witches... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Something is cooking here, though. Our character Subaru seems to be united together with Satila in some way, and it's implied he could join the six archbishops in some circumstance. True, right? The what-if routes. These are all routes where he represents that specific sin. Not, well, I think the envy route is also there, right? So maybe that's not the best representation, but, you know, there are six archbishops. As well. Is his possible fate right there in his name? It may be worth pointing out that the OVA Memory Snow even makes a self-aware reference to the mm. night sky. And really? that every star has its- True, right? This is a very important scene, right? After, right before, you know, Biko showed that- Well, Roswell pointed it out, right? Biko has like a deep sadness that apparently Subaru is kind of helping out, and that's why Biko still acts all sundere and kind of doesn't want to be with the main group and socialize, but there was direct talk about the constellations here. Its own name and story. Subaru will attempt to share his astronomical knowledge, but in typical fashion for the series, his expectations are somewhat overturned, mm. as the orientation of the sky is different from Earth's, and the origin of his name is met with ridicule rather than wonder. <laughs> Perhaps we should take- <laughs> What did Biko say here? How cruel of your parents to give you the name of a group of shining stars. That's cruel? Is she making us- Why would it be cruel? Is there a deeper meaning in this dialogue? Is it cringe to have your name be after a group of shining stars? Because he doesn't shine? Because he's plain? I think that Subaru does shine. He does shine. Sometimes. It was followed by, but you don't shine. Got it. Hmm. Subaru is not the star. It's <laughs> just like Rachel. <laughs> they all want to be stars. Well, sometimes... I don't know. He doesn't shine. Don't catch attention. Don't you feel like he does catch a lot of attention? He stands out like a sore thumb. Buddy has a fucking tracksuit he just walks around with. His fucking spiky hair, you know, sharp eyes, the thick stench of the witch's miasma. Does it not stick out as a fucking... I don't know, if you just look at him amongst everyone else. And then like, yes, there are times when he definitely doesn't shine. But quite often, when he does succeed, he does seem like a star. But, it, you know, there's... You, you can do mental gymnastics to argue of whether or not he does shine or not. Perhaps we should take this warning under advisement, and not assume that these observations will match up in the way we expect. There sure are a lot of coincidences, though. There are, right? Again, that's the beautiful thing about conspiracy theories or 
tinfoil theories, right? Where it's just like, not all of us are correct, but there is a lot of coincidences, right? We're not saying that this is a fact. We're making observations. But based on the observations, don't you think that the theme of this show, what they're trying to tell us, it just lines up a bit too well? I know that I'll be keeping my eye on the sky for possibilities. Mm. And I've been keeping my eye on the screen for the existence of Appas. As we start to learn the next part of the story. All right. Thank you so much again, Mr. Nearly On Red. Guys, if you have not checked out his channel, you need to go check it out. These are some fucking big brain shit. Please go give it a like. Please sub to his channel if you haven't. I'll see you next time.